this year and already in one with Dutch International and one with the prestigious Belgian International in September. Runner up at the Polish International quarterfinals of the Swiss International and the reigning European Junior Big Singles Champion. We just played the runner up at Belgian Bulgarian International quarterfinal in Belgium and Slovenia. And a big improvement from his first round defeat last year at the Irish Open. It's the final this year to the French Union. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, we got the top last. And on my left, we got the top last. We got the top last. Lava play. Welcome back. It's the very final match of the Carlton Irish Open 2015. And what a way to finish it. One of the rising stars of European men's singles for sure. If not world badminton. And there's Andersen, the furthest from the camera in yellow, sporting his now customary trademark headband. And his opponent nearest the camera, representing France, is Luca Clairvaux. And with me again for this final match is Sam McGee. Sam, thank you very much for sitting in again. And uh, I know the whole, everyone that's in the, in the hall here are here to see Anderson and want to see what all the talk is about. And uh, he really is a huge talent. Great seat to be in to watch a player of this standard coming through. He's been on the lips of everyone in the hall all week. And it's not too hard to see why he marked, to be honest. He's he has it all. We yeah. sat here, we, we, we were here in 2009 when Carolina Marin, when Carolina Marin won her first international event when she won the uh, Irish International. And look what she has gone on to do and uh, double world champion, five time Super Series winner. And as you said in the last match, this has been such a breeding ground for top international players. And I think Anders Antonsen falls into that category. In a disappointing World Juniors, uh, very much expected to win a medal. Event lost in the, I think, quarterfinal to the eventual winner, Indian guy, I think. Certainly got to the final, uh, the Indian, Indian Junior. That was the one blip in the copybook of Antonsen this year. Unable to uh, follow up on uh, Victor Axelsen's gold medal in the, in the World Juniors. We tend to forget, though, the year that Axelsen won the World Juniors, there was hardly any Chinese involvement. He's still World Junior Champion. 
four senior tournaments this year for the young 17-year-old from Aarhus in Jutland in Denmark. And two wins, a runner-up in a quarter-final. And on top of that, winning the European Junior title back in April in Poland. A favourite, but uh, this Luca Clairbo, he's one of these guys that has certainly seemed to have blossomed since uh, Peter Gede came on board in, in Denmark. He had a huge win over his countryman, Tomo Roussel, in the earlier rounds. Certainly bragging rights associated with that one. And uh, he's made huge leaps forward since Peter Gaeta took over. I think he's always been a hard-working player, uh, Lucas Clarbu, but now he's got that extra there, that sharpness of a ball to make more winners. I think that must be something that Gaeta's been working on. The best right there. there we go, that shot there. Something you didn't normally see from him creating so many winners. Now he's got that power overhead, accuracy. He, he won't be intimidated by this situation at all. He's probably coming in as a slight underdog. Yeah, I think he will, he will revel in that, yeah. that as underdog, really nothing to lose, go and express himself. Which is uh, it's quite strange to say that because he's playing an 18 year old who he's probably ranked much above, but. There's not a huge difference in the rankings. They're well. They're both well down in the hundreds. But okay. it's, uh, I think both of them. You know, it won't take them long for both of them to be inside the world's top 100. I think Lucas has made that type of development, and made that improvement, and uh, and his Anderson is only going one way anyway. That's uh, north to the world's top 10. Antonsen is 167 in the world, Lucas Clairbo 112. But Antonsen is only there, is 167, but only four tournaments. You can see for Antonsen, this is probably the first time he hasn't had to qualify in one of these events. Not that it seems to affect him anyway when he does have to qualify. Yeah. Youthful, youthful exuberance. And pull through qualification. You're right, this is the first event he's played. He didn't have to qualify for I think too many people have, you know, have had the opportunity to see much of Anton. You know, in Denmark, he's highly regarded from his. You know, he's got a good record in his league games. So what do you think, Mark? What do you think just makes him so special for, you know, his age? First and foremost, is his attitude. Yeah. Uh, you talk to him, and I've talked to him a lot because I've had to interview him a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've had to write articles about him, so I've, 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 I've had that little bit of close proximity to him. And, uh, and he's a very, very grounded young man. Yeah. You see a lot of the young players who, in whatever country, would smash. And if they win a tournament, you all of a sudden they sort of lose the run of themselves. This guy is completely grounded, completely focused. So for 17, you, you know, you, you have real adult conversations with him. Um, and uh, he, ha he doesn't get ahead of himself. He knows where he wants to be. He knows what he wants to do. And I think more importantly, coming from Denmark, he knows what he'll have to do to achieve it. You know, there's many players who could have already, uh, their head could have exploded with the amount of tension he's gotten in the last year. Yeah. One thing he doesn't like is that he always has this people say, oh, the next Peter Gaeta, the next Peter Gaeta. That's something he's not comfortable with when you, when you speak to him. But there's so many similarities. I was in, uh, in Belgium where he won from qualification this year. I was standing off the corner watching his match against Rasmus Flabberg, which was, had a lot on it for both men. Uh, Gaeta was there with the French team and he was standing in the corner. Well, I was standing in the corner. The next thing... A touch on my shoulder and I turned around and it was Peter Gaeta and he goes does he remind you of anybody <laughs> certainly does there's yeah. similar there is a lot of similarities similar styles, yeah. similar styles same physical attributes And he's the only 14-year-old I've ever seen when he was 14 to win, a, win through qualification in, into the main draw of a, an international challenge, which he did. The, remember the Denmark International, which was up in Frederikshavn? Frederikshavn, yeah. yeah. When he was half the height he is now. Oh. 
The problem, that could probably be my big fear for him going forward, uh, his rate of growth. We've seen it with Victor Axelsen. Victor just still just seems to be pushing on. And Is there a point where you get too tall for singles? But Luca Clairvo is certainly sticking to his task here, Sam. Yeah, working very hard. He's well able to hold the speed. Just if Garbu has those shot qualities there to win the rallies against Hamilton, so it's a very tough defense break. Yeah. Here we go, every shuttle just seems to be coming back with quality. Great patience from such a young head. Yeah. I think as with every top pair, they make the game look so easy. And it's definitely not. Nathanson really does that. Nine, seven. You see in Denmark where a lot of their top singles players, in some, some time they actually pull away from the league. The Danish league has benefited him hugely because it's prepared him for this level. You know, when you're battling it out against Villa Lang, in Dan Denmark, or your own, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Jorgensen or Wittinghus or whoever it may be. Interesting. Uh, he doesn't have a world ranking. His ranking is so high in Denmark from one league matches that he actually plays above Lemon Quack on his team. Correct. He plays so first. He plays first singles. That's yes. a big difference. You know, you're playing first singles against the best in Denmark. More often than not, winning these matches. Oh. Carbo. Yeah, we must not forget about the Frenchman, you know, as I said, a guy who's made huge strides this year. You know, this time last year, you would certainly be looking at Lucas Clairbo as a, almost like a journeyman yeah. in the game. But uh, he's really stepped up in recent months. I think for him, he has to use this tournament now to move forward. You know, he's yeah, he's, he's, he's hunting around. a win now. He needs a win in his career. He's runner-up in Bulgaria. A win certainly would take him to the next level. He beat Zavadsky in the semi final 21 18, 21 9. Zavadsky again, another one is sort of starting to find some sparkle of form after an injury. Some are hampered by injury. And then Clebo went to three against Marius Meyer at Norway. Norwegian has been in some reasonable form recently also. Winning his own home international, and uh, before that, as I said, he beat uh, Thomas Roussel, his countryman, in the fourth seed, easily in two games, 17 and 14. Just in the matches, you know, you'd expect him to struggle. He's won in two sets, and then maybe against Meyer, we expect him to be better. He struggled. Maybe this is a sign. Doesn't seem to be feeling the pressure out there at all at the minute. Yeah, Marius, you see, you see. Remember Marius Myra here from last year, this time last year, uh, for the uh, qualification for the mixed team championship. He's been a better player this year. What a point to think in Scotland. Won the Norway National Series. Uh, Antelson himself, 15 and 9 against Brees Levides. That's sort of an indication of the direction he's going in terms of world ranking. Very convincing one. And beat the young Finn, who's already young, won this year, Kalle Colin, and uh, which was probably his closest match, yeah. 19 and 14, the finish. He certainly had chances in that game. Kalle is a very dangerous player because yeah. he's you know, a lot of energy all the time. Also being left-handed helps. Speaking of left-handed, I'll tell you a funny one. <laughs> I realized for the first time in my career involved in badminton that Linda is a cheery left-handed yesterday. No. It's funny you often hear about players that come off court and then they realise their opponent was left-handed. Yeah. <laughs> You've been around a long time, Mark, you should. Too long. Yeah, maybe that's why. Here we go. Anderson with a two-point lead. Yeah, two-point lead. Anderson further from the camera in yellow. And it's been an emotional time of recent weeks also for the French. We have to remember that. 
very emotional scenes in Scotland straight after the travesty that was up in Paris. Yeah. Any French putting pressure on you? <laughs> yeah. For Olympic yeah. qualification, we have to sort of tip our hats to Le Bar and Lafell and the re their results in recent months. I think French on its way up. It should be, they've got a lot of good players now, a good coach. Yeah, I think Peter came in and uh, sort of essentially cracked the whip and taught them what, what really forced onto them all what is needed to be top class. Delphine Lansac, I think, was playing with Emily Lefell in women's doubles and they were winning circuit events. They told her she was singles or doubles. You know? So uh, I think those hard decisions sometimes have to be made. So sure about the celebrity status is within the uh, French national system at the moment. He's one of these players like Conan, maybe more of an individual. That's what he seems to be doing now. Let's see how it works out for him. He's still the highest ranked French player, Brees. Yeah, by, uh, by far. So these guys like Carbo, Roxel, and Corby to try and catch him up. I think they're a long way off, Reece yeah. still, and, uh, but of them all, I think Lucas seems to be making, this Lucas, not Luca Corve, seems to be making the jump, seems to be comfortable making that, uh, that jump. See more young uh, ladies, young girls coming through, more than boys. Yeah. Antonson, Sam just starting to get grips on this really he's just keeping the pressure constant all the time as whether Clarebu can you know, maintain that or if he falls below it he falls on away Controversial sweat rule is coming to Bamden. To be honest, Mark, I don't really see a way around it. Yeah, I don't know what is the best policy. Some people say players flicking sweat doesn't look good. Some people say the umpire then is breaking the rhythm of the game, so it's you know it's quite a tough one to get right. Or you know what the answer is? Change the rules. Change the rules. Yeah, make the game be. shorter, sharper, quicker. Uh, you don't tend. You don't tend to see the guys. Uh, you don't tend to see them looking for the breaks. We don't. You, we don't see it in the English league, for example. We don't see it in the English league, for example, yeah. looking for towel breaks because the nature of the game dictates that it's not needed. Yeah. Now, that's the extreme. We need to find, my opinion, something in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting too. Someone was just asking me how often does court need to be mopped. My <laughs> whenever the players need a break, to be honest. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like things like that. As soon as you have an interval, you can have the court mop. Yeah. Get your players to tile down and play as continuous then. Which is the rule. It is the rule, but uh, say rules are there to be broken. You can see in every game, the players are disturbing the rhythm. We saw it, the men's doubles. We saw, it, we saw, we saw the Poles trying to break the rhythm of the Germans and, and vice versa. And that's okay in some respect because it becomes part of the tactic once it's not really delaying play. Yeah. But in singles, you'll see someone play a shot, bad shot into the net, turn and do a lap, yeah. and then pass the shuttle back. And then the other guy decides to change the shuttle. There's too many breaks. The initial shot from Carver straight down the front, but it's a follow up. He's there early. He just guides across the net. 15 all. Anyone's game now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's close. 
There it is again. Very good accuracy in that shot. 16-15. Let's see if he can keep trying it now when it matters most. These big points. Last two shots have been more or less perfect from Carbo. It's a confident shot. It's a rare error from Anthonson under no real pressure. It's a good two-point lead at a crucial point in the first game. The whole crowd recognises that. I think they weren't expecting this at all. Anthonson to be put under real pressure here. That's the kind of shot there you'd like to see Carbo maybe challenge the net in these big points, just not give away an easy lift. Pressure high. Time Anderson, great angle on the smash, then following up. You can see it here on the replay. Speed going forward. Goes for a forehand kill on the backhand side. Very impressive speed going forward by Anders Anderson. You know, still developing, still 17, still a lot of physical development needed. Still more power to come when he needs the power, and you'd say another three years or something like that. And, uh, I've even seen it, even since he won the European Juniors in, uh, which is this year, in April. Even the difference physically. Been huge. Keep that quality in the shots. Nothing less and he, he won't win this final. The return of serve that we saw so effective for Olga Conan in the previous women's singles final. Body showing one thing, racket doing the opposite. Seizing the opportunity. You see what I like about Andrews also is that uh, yeah, there's some emotion there too when you know th that you like to see from a uh, from a young man. Not afraid to show his emotion. Although he should be afraid, he should be embarrassed to wear that headband. <laughs> Here we go. But he shows it in the right way. He, he knows when it's a critical point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got his nose in front again. And this is a huge point. Serve down the middle. Smash down the line. All done. All of a sudden, when Max is looking very close, he's got a seems like a big two-point gap. Ah, oh, yeah. What a way to win it. And we see the emotion from Anders Anton again. And again, you asked me the question, what makes him special earlier? And they, that's one of the things that makes him special. At trailing, what was it, 18, 17, they still have that composure. To settle, to figure it out, come back and win the next three points and take the first game. That, uh, the shock ball day on the big points. There he's maybe a centimeter from the line. The inside of the line. And that's the difference. Get to the big points. You can see the rest of the Danish team have deserted him because they're gone to the airport. Quick look around there from Anders Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> I 
maybe a long way back now from Carbo because he, he played some great bands in there mm. and he still came up short. Yeah, he, he will all, almost be just slightly disillusioned knowing how he could play so well and still, yeah. as you said, just come up short. I have a funny feeling that was Matthias Christiansen coming across to say your flight's delayed. <laughs> you can go to three if you need it. <laughs> of the second set will be crucial. Will, but you know what's also crucial? Looking at a tournament, expect yourself to get to the final. I find out when the when the when the finals are on, and then book flights accordingly. You know, there's another two flights I think later on to Copenhagen with the SAS and one with Aer Lingus, and they're slightly later. players sometimes they expect that their final will be before their the flight. First one, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't always work out, especially when you're the star attraction and Anderson mm. is here. Keeps the crowd in the hall. This is the man they want to see. Get himself going. I think he's really going to try and pull away here. So strong. Shot ball is extremely high. Just got that feeling now. Clarbo starting to look a little bit jaded, you know, looking down on himself, picking himself up for every rally. Yeah. Still probably thinking, how did he? Yeah. Probably playing on the that first game. Yeah. He realised that was his chance. Now he has to try and make another one. That's a better, better smash down the line. He's quite happy at the minute oh, to play counter attack. He's letting Carbo, you know, use his overhead, but he's so confident in his defense. He's just turning it and then playing good angle. So to Carbo to up his shot quality, start making more winners. this on the replay. He plays that cross net but he follows it up. He knows where the reply is likely to come and he's already there. You know and it wasn't a bad shot from Lucas no. Clairbo like it was sitting right on top of the net cord. Yeah. <laughs> Carbo actually nearly got the yeah. kill from Antonsen. But this is the last match of the tournament. And, you know, the probably the last match we'll see an Irish Open in Bald Oil. Been a good home to the Irish International and Open over the years. Tight, intimate, old venue. But there's we'll grow into this type of thing over the weekend. The local floor here, but more than likely going to be moving to the new national oh. arena. But it was a good performance this week, Sam, from some of our younger players. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, they need these sort of events. Uh, you know, have that chance to just play against established players. It's good to see uh, a lot of them lose the challenge. Let's hope it gives them a good taste for what they need to do and where the standard is. It's a loose smash cross court. Antonson. Of course, Mark, they get that a bonus of watching these guys play. Up close and personal. Five, 
starting up here here now. Yeah, I'm, I, I, as you said, Sam, I think the lifeblood just started to drain out of Clairbo at the end of that first game when he lost it. Yeah, he certainly had his opportunities. Tournament for you, Sam? You, you go to uh, Italy? No. no. Um, we will start again the new year. Right, okay. And we'll make a plan from there, so. We'll determine the match and how to finish off the year, and then that will be up for 2016. So many tournaments scheduled in this year. It's Olympic year, as I said. A few years ago, there was five Pan American. This year, 27 events. It's like a. American, almost like an American circuit at this point. Come, come in the way. I think here these tournaments might like pop up. Yeah, which is not right, in my opinion. Uh, you should have to earn your way onto the Olympic qualification circuit. But the BWF have put a lot of focus on uh, Pan America in recent years. Also with Brazil hosting the Olympics, they have, I think they've got three events this year. So trying to get interest in Bamden down in Brazil. It's funny, you know, when you, as I've spoken to, you know, uh, badminton suppliers, um, the likes. Ninety-nine percent of of the people who play badminton in North America are female. Even to the point where the racket manufacturers only send in pink, yeah. you know, and, the, and those type of colours. That's the way it is. It's seen as a real girly sport, for want of a better expression. You know, there's no padding needed to go in for crunching tackles and things like that. So that's something they also need to address. Yeah, sport has to crack, so. America is such a big fan base there for sport. Back in the game here, Lucas Carlos just just hanging in there, Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's the expression, just hanging in. Going for the power to the body. Seven Uses that flick a lot more, kind of holds the holds the serve a little bit longer than most, and then he seems to flick it over his opponent. Quite flat as well, like the Conan flat serve. Same shirt sponsor, but same uh, personal sponsor as uh, as Jano Jorgensen used to have in his early career, bursting onto the singles scene. It's a company, and our host sponsors a lot of the players up there. Rather than there used to be one that wore it as well. I think they're a transport company or something like that. Yeah. Of course, Anders Anderson from Aarhus still represents Aarhus Bamda Club. Home of Morton Frost, of course. Produced a lot of good players down through the years. Yeah. 
produced a lot of killer drills as well. Yeah. Named after him <laughs> when training, isn't yeah. that the Morton Frost? It is. <laughs> Of course, ahead of Malaysia Banda now. For the second time. That was loose. Just not pulling away as we might expect him to at the minute. Yeah, but he won those first two points. So I expected, oh, he's going to run yeah. off, rush on here and win to nine or ten or something like that. But it hasn't been like that. Oh. You have to feel that's a critical point. It was Caribou's point. You know, he had it all wrapped up. Just had to just tap it over. Sounds so easy sometimes, and then just the racket just seemed to slide on through. The umpire no choice but to call it. Now he's at the gap. Just to win this one, Caribou. Yeah. Stuff and contention. And again, you know, the patience, the, the tight net shot from Clairbo and uh, Antonsen, you know, just brushed it in behind them. It wasn't any fancy. Develop the rally, develop the rally, patience, and then wait for the opportunity. That cam. Pose your back, Antonsen. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, call that. Yeah, uh, I I think it just dropped out. Yeah, probably yeah, was. Just dropped out. Something you never really see Anderson. He never gets involved in the line calls. He's very he takes the game as it comes. This time again, just a little look at the umpire and off he goes back. Focuses himself. Yeah, that was out. Call by the line judge. Oh. There's a golden opportunity now all of a sudden. Interval. And has a three-point lead. Really, it should have been a routine winner. But oh, you can see him holding his hands in his head. More importantly, you can see the whole crowd holding their hands in their heads. Yeah, so gasp! You can hear the gasp. It's not easy for a player. The whole hall knows that should have been a winner. Maybe from a crowd's perspective, they wouldn't mind seeing this game go to three sets. Although, at the minute, looks like Anderson's going to calmly win this in two. I think he has to win it in two if he wants to make his flight. Yeah. Flight exa in two hours exactly from now. Okay, let's the airport. Let's reassure everybody's literally only 10 minutes away. So the weekend, the traffic won't be as bad as normal. I think also spending most of his time now in the National Centre. Looking at Kenny Jonasson as that he should relish. He also has a great training partner with him in the National Team. Jano Jorgensen, Rick Atkinson, and Christian Wittinghus. All more senior players than him. We've seen a few loose ones in this match.
Oh. Oh, a little bit of luck. line to him in this game. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fourth one. Just not pulling away. He should be pulling away. He's putting himself into the position in the rallies. Actually open up a gap. The Frenchman is just clinging on. I think overall he has played better this week. But as good players do, they just do enough to win when they need to. He was very clinical on his opening round against. Oh, he demolished. Last Malkov. week's winner? Yeah, Malkov yeah. who won in Wales last week. It's very impressive in Wales, maybe. This thing out of Malkov's game. Oh, out. Yeah, that was a long way out, but it was a brave, brave shot. 12 all. This ain't over yet. Mark, I'm very impressed with Carbo here. It's just, you know, he's fighting every point. He's missed some big shots, but he's still in there playing good tempo. Here we go, 12 all. That's great return. Body going one way, shot will go the other. Follows it up with a nice winner. Right to King Gasses. Bravo. I think he's in every right to go for that. Yeah, there was there. It was, okay, it wasn't a half court lift, but it certainly wasn't uh, wasn't pushing Clairbo onto the baseline. And the cross smash, the court was open, it was there to be to be won. Two points lead again. Jump there with Carbo. Slightly easier chance this time, and they could see the confidence just to put it away after missing the last one. Can you see a way back here for Carbo, Mark? Not when he makes a ra a really easy errors like he did on the previous point, when there's, you know, like against these players, these good players, which are all good when you get to a final, no matter what, what the level. If you get a half court lift and even open court, you have to take that chance. Yeah. If he's not going to take those chances, no, I don't. I don't really say a way back. I see him hanging in there, yeah. as he's done literally all the match. But I, 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 I'm not seeing, uh, I'm not seeing a real weapon there. The trouble and certainly in defence. I'm going to try and call here, Mark. I'm going to say three sets. I think Clarebo's hanging in. He has a chance. Why not? The flight is playing on Antonson's mind. Yeah, well, you know, it, it has to be in there. It was, it was playing on his mind two and a half hours ago when I was chatting to him over here, so. There we go, 14 0. It's like to see Clarewo, you know, even if he misses, take those chances, have a go. Right. Now Clarebo's in the lead. Yeah. It's all of a sudden becoming edgy. Yeah, use a flick there, Clarebo. Yeah. Interesting tactic. I'm trying to remember. This is 
Was it Luca Clairbo? No, it was Luca Corvey that Scott Evans beat the year he won it. Was it? Yeah, it I think he beat them both, one after the other. One after the other, semi yeah. And then the final, so. I'll be hunting ground for the French here. Yeah. Clairbo was beaten in the opening round last year. Been watching third player though, Mark. That was in, yeah. Great call. 15, 16. That really is the mark of a great player. And you said Mark, he's hadn't had much success down that line and there all of a sudden when he needs it most, puts it right on the line. Uh, I think I'm counting six unforced errors from Antonsen in this game. Points here, Mark. Down oh. as well. <laughs> you go, I think Carver, he's not doing anything different. It's just good energy, you know, at the end of the set. Wants to make it difficult. I think Anders is edgy. I think he has this flight in his mind. Yeah. He's trying to win it maybe too early. <laughs> No, it's been indicating that grip. Big wipe of the hand now to pose himself. Up and down, Mark. Seem to be gambling on the net. Didn't recover quick enough. Yeah, gambling yeah, on the net. Yeah, you can see the footwork. Get some wrist here, Dan. There we go, Mark. That was seems to be a good call. Uh, yeah. Seems to be three sets. That's why you play it professionally, <laughs> and I don't. Sixteen. Sense there was an aginess coming from Anderson and Carbo just seemed to be sticking in there. Good energy. We need to put this away. One of these games, it's been swinging back and forward this second set. You have to remember too, Lucas Clairvaux has to be feeling edgy now. This yeah. is an unfamiliar position. No. So, sort of similar in the first set though, Mark. You know, he was, he was leading and he had yeah. that chance. Now he has a bigger chance in the second, and maybe the one, you know, that chance in the first is playing on him now. Let's hope he can you know, get a good point together, put pressure on Antonsen. There we go. Good pressure at the minute. There's where he has to counter. That's his chance. Decision on the back. You said it. You said it. See what happens as well now, Mark. Last time he flicked and he counted quite well off it. You know, a little bit lucky, but see what he does here. I think what we will see from Lucas Clairvo, we'll see him all out. go all in. Yeah. yeah, going for it, no matter what. I hope he does. I hope he doesn't try and so oh, play safe. Good. Good. Body. He's dangerous around the head. Both Ooh, again, risky. Rally. It's almost like a winner take all rally. Oh. This time goes cross. Fantastic. High speed. 
Oh, what a rally from, from and both men. To be fair. Again, though, yeah, like will yeah exa in exactly the same position. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. me, Mark, he has to make a decision on that very early. It has to be the leave or he has to just continue the rally. You know. Of course, it's easy from this position sitting here to say that. <laughs> Great character, by the way, to see it in four set points. Now. Now, Mark. Now we'll see what both, both these men are, are made of. I you don't think Carbo, you know, he did, didn't do a lot wrong in that last rally. He just couldn't find the winner. And then maybe give it up a little bit easy at the end. Let's see now. Like Mark coming. No. Oh, below that time. Oh! Eight centers at the match point. What's that, six in a row? Five in a row now, I think. Five, five in a row. Probably deserves that better luck after playing some. No, six in a row, 20, 2015 yeah. behind. We have a match point, and all of a sudden my three set call is not looking so good. Just watch Anthony here, he always composed himself with a very deep breath before he starts a rally. Axes the shoulders. There we go. And now he's ready. Take the title. Great tempo. Look how early he's taking that. Put pressure on. There's his chance. That's and there it. we go. Right on his knees. Yeah. Seven points in a row. And Anders Anderson is the Irish Open champion. Third win this year. Fantastic match. Claybo just didn't take his chance. No. Nope. Uh, it's the young Dane who goes on to win yet another title at just 17 years of age. What a performance. But a much improved Lucas Claybo also, we have to say. That's the end of our streaming. My thanks to Sam and Dan before him for joining us. And. Uh, I'm going to leave you very quickly because I have to get out and do a quick interview with Anthonsons before he heads off to the airport. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll be back again next year, hopefully from the new National Indoor Arena. Thank you. Bye-bye.
tournament wins this year, uh, including, uh, in addition to European Juniors, uh, good season this year, it's been a good 2016. Yeah, it's been a really good 2016. Uh, it's a really good way to achieve the last tournament, so I'm very happy. Guys, we're going to let them go. We know it's Russian to the airport now. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, Bruce. Thank you. Well, that leads us to the wrap up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming to the Irish Show for 2015. We'd like to thank all our invited guests uh, for being here. We'd like to thank our fantastic line judges who've done a fantastic job this week. All the staff, match control, Willie and all the gang. All the people behind the scenes, streaming, and two and uh, all you spectators coming along and supporting this Irish Open final safe moment. Thank you very much. Bye bye.